This is literally Psalm 23. This was the month I had a huge shift in my hormones. This particular month, this was at the end of spring. I filmed this video of what I eat in a day on the farm, staying at an Airbnb, even just being out and about leading up to ovulation. I wanted to take you through a whole day of nourishment even while I traveled. Being at this barn and farm really made me realize how much I loved having fresh eggs. I've never had fresh eggs before, being able to walk outside on the grass and pick up fresh eggs was truly an experience like no other. So I made everybody scrambled eggs because we had all of our friends over. We even played a little game before we had breakfast. And honestly, that in and of itself is super nourishing. But I really loved cooking in this little kitchenette. And I really focused on having bioavailable protein, carbohydrates specifically with fiber. So lots and lots of berries, fresh fruit, a little bit of that gluten-free bread. That is always a favorite. And then some chicken apple sausage for that extra added protein just so I could get in enough protein. Protein single-handedly has changed my hormones. Regularly getting enough protein at breakfast completely sets the tone hormonally. That hormonal response to breakfast just really, again, sets the tone for the rest of the day. And you can't beat local jam. You just can't. So <laughs> we had some local jam on our gluten-free bread, set the table, and sitting around the table with people that you love. This is nourishment to me. Where you up when the blinds pulled down You love it when nobody's around I wanna call out pound town But you bite my lip, don't make a sound I'm totally losing my voice, but that was like because I used my vocal cords actually incorrectly. Anyway, we had the best breakfast. We had all of our old our old friends, our old youth friends, and they're all grown up now and they still want to hang out with us. And we had the best breakfast ever. So we're going to make lunch right now. I'm going to show you what we're having. It was a beautiful morning and now I'm going to make lunch. So we're going to do like a little chicken pesto. I actually bought, let me show you. So this is like how we eat, travel eats, and how to eat in a kitchenette. So I actually, I went and picked up shredded rotisserie chicken, so super easy protein. And then I have these cassava tortillas, so easy. So we're gonna get that out. And then I picked up this delicious pesto. We got local pesto, we had local jam this morning, the best jam ever. And then I picked up some fresh mozzarella. And I'm gonna make like a little basil, a chicken basil, Kind of like a panini, but it's gonna be with the little cassava wrap. So maybe it's like a quesadilla, like a pesto chicken quesadilla. And by the way, I am in love with these plates. These are the cutest. This whole set is just the cutest set that I've ever seen in my entire life. This to me is like the ultimate life hack when you're traveling. If you can get pre-made shredded chicken, rotisserie chicken, that was perfect. That's a great one. That is one of the cutest things I think I've ever seen in my life. A baby lamb. Those are bunch of sun babies. <laughs> Blueberry honey, there it is. Okay, let's see the top. Ooh. That, what do we got for that one? We got the one the and the only. Man. Yes. The one and the only. It's the best. Ooh. Ooh. Nice. 18 grams of protein, right? Mm -hmm. Ooh, these look very good. It's like, oh, look at that, honey. To a distant place, just us two. A little snack by the river. Oh, this is a dream. This is a dream. Genuinely the cutest thing I've ever seen in my life. Look at the mom and the baby. So sweet. Don't worry. We're just gonna go down by the river. 
fresh local honey from right up the road with some organic raspberries and some protein rich yogurt. This is actually a winery that's on. So essentially the red barn has, this is part of the property of the red barn where you can walk down and go and sit on this side of the river. So we're gonna go eat our little bowl right over here, which is so amazing. Winery and in the summer they have like a bunch of food trucks and you can go eat and the sun sets over the river. It's so unbelievably beautiful. Yes. That's what I did all a couple years ago. So and that was when I was writing Milk and Honey, but look at Red Barn Farm. And we have our own little, so amazing. Really oh my gosh. That's so sweet. With you, my arms, nothing can go wrong. We'll Pretty oh, epic. Look who decided to come in. Oh, who's gonna come hang out with us? <laughs> this cat is obsessed with you, Bo. You eat your yogurt, buy this beautiful Hi, river, and just Aww. let the cat love on you. Snuggles, babe. I want to hold you. Oh, just snuggles. Is he gonna come with us? He is. Oh, look who's coming after us. Oh. <laughs> oh, it's just the most beautiful place that we've ever stayed. So much fun. That cat is watching us. Come back just to see the cat. <laughs> So I never filmed an outro for this video and I was like, I wanna post this video though because that was such a good example of what I was eating leading up to ovulation that really has enabled me to get to the progesterone number that I'm currently at now. That was a month that I really shifted in my hormones and I saw such a drastic spike in my ovulation, like had such a good ovulation that month. And I really just wanted to give you an example of like simple, a simple day of nourishment that even when traveling, that it doesn't have to be complicated. It can be really easy, you know, even especially with, you know, especially with traveling, like the pre-cooked chicken and things like that, but that even our life our life really does nourish us as well and getting to hang out with our friends and be at that absolutely beautiful airbnb that was like literally straight out of song 23 of just like the little baby lamb and just how beautiful and peaceful and restful that truly was that that is so nourishing it's like pleasant words are like honeycomb you know they're sweet to our soul their health to our bones and that that can be taken poetically and it is poetic but it also is it's also very much literal it's very literal in the sense that god really does want to lead us by green pastures and by still waters he wants to restore our souls and even when maybe food feels complicated i just was having a conversation about that where it feels maybe like bondage maybe it feels like heavy a heavy part of your life or something that you just you wish that you didn't have to struggle with it or maybe that you are struggling in your health like with me with hormones and you're just wanting to see changes so badly but you're not and you feel like you're circling the mountain and you feel like you've just been going and trying so hard and i even just read that this morning that Elijah prayed over and over. Was it Elijah or Elisha? I wanted to make sure I was saying that right. His servant went out and he said, did you see anything? Did you see he's praying for rain? Nope, I didn't see anything. Nope, I didn't see anything. Kept praying, kept praying. Nope, I didn't see anything. And the seventh time he said, I see a cloud the size of a man's hand. And that's the thing that when we continue to lift our hands up to prayer and up to God, that he hears us and he sees us and to keep praying, to keep praying, even when you don't see any changes, even when you don't, that to, to be persistent, to be consistent, that God hears our prayers and he shapes our hearts as we wait. And I, I think that don't despise, don't despise the waiting, don't despise even the hardship, suffering produces within us something that is far greater than we could ever imagine. The glory that is coming is gonna be so far greater than anything that we could ever dream. And maybe our dreams that we feel are broken or crushed, 
maybe the ultimate dream is so much bigger and so much more beautiful than we could ever imagine and one day we are really truly going to be able to say that we see that God works all things together for good we know that we know that but sometimes we don't see it right away and I think that that's where we can get discouraged and get tripped up I didn't see changes right away I did not see changes in my hormones right away in fact there was months that the number just stayed the same and I was thinking okay well you know I'm gonna I'm gonna keep going it was hard it was hard to keep going it was hard to keep believing but I never gave up and I don't say that to show you that I am so great and I never gave up no I say that to say I really 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 was discouraged I really didn't know if my numbers would change I really didn't I really didn't know that and I, and I say that so that it can give you more faith that it can encourage your faith that when you're not seeing anything for me to say to keep going to keep going because there is you know those lies in your head or even from you know comparison to other people that you look around and you see well they're improving or this is changing for them but for me you know i want you to keep running your race and to keep headed forward you know okay my arm is literally going to fall off oh i forgot i wanted to share one more thing really fast this cycle just because now i'm just i'm just a completely open book at this point and this is the best ovulation that i have ever had as far as tracking signs and symptoms this month and i have by far okay so i'm just going to be completely honest and open with you because you know what I didn't know. I didn't know this kind of stuff, even as a woman. And if I didn't know this, how many other women don't know this? I had absolutely no idea that every single month you should be checking your cervical mucus. And there was a very, very long time where I really just didn't even have any cervical mucus. I kind of didn't, I forgot about it, didn't really know. And then I thought back to even my er early first cycles, remembering that I was like, oh yeah, I remember I used to have that. But then pretty much like pretty just dry, just pretty dry down there, like very indicative of not ovulating, which means something is off with the hormones, which means the cells aren't getting what they need. And so that being said, this particular cycle is the best ovulation, signs, symptoms, cervical mucus, everything like that that I have ever had. And I have been sharing everything of like what I'm eating, and here's the thing, I've been getting a lot of questions on like what to do foundationally. And I really believe more than anything, the more the more that I do everything that I do and do it consistently, that's really what's made the biggest difference. So getting enough protein is absolutely essential. Minimum 100 grams of bioavailable protein every single day and balancing your blood sugar, which comes down to getting enough fiber. Getting enough fiber because that is what is going to feed the good bacteria in your gut that are directly responsible for modulating your blood sugar. So not only does fiber slow down the absorption of glucose into our bloodstream, but it feeds the beneficial bacteria that actually help our body use glucose well. The point is, is that fiber is really important so i love berries i love raspberries I, you can do frozen berries any there's so many different options that you could do but berries are one of the best most affordable ways to do fiber for me as you know when i took my gi map that was a really big eye opener for me with my with that specific bacteria because i wasn't eating enough fiber at the time i wasn't doing the basics there's so many different options that you can do to get enough fiber and berries are just really one of the easiest ones but Another one that I really loved, I, I've taken it every single day up to, I've talked about Just Thrive Health for literally years now, but when they came out with their Precision Prebiotic and I found out that I had low acromancia, this specifically is going to feed those good bacteria and is going to help with the blood sugar regulation, healthy sugar metabolism, because it feeds those good bacteria that are directly involved in that which is essential for ovulation is as being able to use glucose well as being able to balance your blood sugar whenever you'd hear it whenever i'd hear that balance your blood sugar i never really understood that i didn't really know what that meant and i didn't know that regardless of how much protein regardless of how much you move i was doing all the right things i was working out i was eating you know how you see me eat and i still was struggling with ovulation and 
really with my blood sugar regulation. And that's when I realized that I really was missing prebiotics, prebiotic fiber that feeds the good bacteria. That's why I love matcha and do that every single day. And I just had to share that with you. So fiber, protein, I absolutely love that precision prebiotic. It's delicious and it's it's just an easy way for me to do it. It's just for me, once I got my gut test back, I really wanted something that I knew that I was gonna be targeting every single day to feed that beneficial bacteria. So that's something that I love. And then also genuinely making sure that my cells just get the nutrients that they need. So zinc, I liked oysters for that, beef liver, um, a really, really high quality multivitamin without iron in it has been very helpful based on my blood work, my blood, my blood tests, what I needed. Those nutrients are directly responsible for even allowing ovulation to take place, to even occur, and then to have a strong, healthy ovulation and focusing on potassium and vitamin C with the Osterola cherry and getting enough potassium. I'm telling you, it's the peas, it's the prebiotics, it's the potassium, and it's the polyphenols that are so essential. I have increased my fruit massively. I am getting in so many antioxidants, which is gonna help with that cellular damage. It all comes down to the cell. The consistency is the key and doing it every single day that's that month I learned, hey, I need to start being watchful of my potassium intake and increasing that. But I was already seeing such a massive improvement in my ovulation. And really, that was a really big turning month for me where things have just improved, improved, improved. I just want to say thank you so much for doing all that with me. Thank you for literally crying with me on my hard days. And thank you for rejoicing with me on the days that there is something to celebrate. I genuinely love you so much. And I just could not be more more thankful to create videos and be in your life and it's just one of the things in my life that I truly treasure the most is you. I'll leave everything linked in the description box, uh, the prebiotic, the Airbnb, all the goodness, everything in the description box in this video. And by the way, the Airbnb that we stayed at is was the cutest thing in the whole world. It was genuinely the best Airbnb stay that we have ever had. If you're ever in Southern Oregon, it's the most peaceful, restful, beautiful. The little kitchenette was adorable. Oh, it was so beautiful. The swing outside, even just the outdoor air Area, like being able to sit down by the river it was such a gorgeous place so I'll leave a link to that in the description below if you ever want to stay there it was just such a dream and the owner of the place is the sweetest lady in the whole world so if you just so happen to be traveling to Southern Oregon I thought I would let you know so anyway I'll leave a link in the description for that but I love you so much and I will see you in my next video bye